Hello friends and adventurers, and welcome back to Sally Cat Plays Exile 3, Ruined World. I have finally circumnavigated Lake Tomor and explored all of the towns in the area. Now it's time to go pound some giants. But first, I'm going to check in at Lorelei and do a bit of inventory management at my new mansion. Oh dear, Lorelei seems to have reached the next stage of <laughs> being damaged by the giant plague. I could spend a lot of time wandering around, or I could just do a magic map. Well, I don't see a whole lot of obvious damage, except maybe up over here. Oh, yeah, th this corner is pretty smashed. Lorelei Armory. I think is no more. Just let me squeeze in here. You find the body of a female beggar. She died quickly, one shattering blast from a giant's club. At least it wasn't disease or acid. As it would be if she had died to roaches or slimes. Oh no, giant! Maybe I should replace that barrier I took down. Oh, that's interesting. With magic map, I can see only the roof of the mansion, not the interior of it. Um, let's see. Some damage here, but much less than in the other corner of town. Ooh, I can see into the Anima Temple. Yay. Anyway, on to business. Randall, you got anything good? Well, the Wand of Vorb certainly isn't it. Eskel's Ring supposedly cures disease. I remember not having great luck with that in Exile 2. Ice Shield offers some pretty decent fire resistance. Why do you have a Cursed Shield available for sale? Yeah. Nothing too impressive this time around. And since it's been a little while since I last recorded, I don't remember if I have anything I want to sell. Okay, the steel large shield I can sell. That's not very special. Weak healing isn't that useful to me. Basic necklace can be on the rare occasions I find a, an enemy with acid. Scribane herb I should maybe do something with eventually. Okay. Let's go drop some of my extra loot and alchemy ingredients off at my shiny new home. Okay, I was actually hoping to see some new dialogue from this place, but apparently that's not happening yet. Maybe I'll go find the housekeeper, she see if she's got anything interesting for me. No, nothing. Alright. Maybe I'll just have to come back again later. Because I know there is something special happening with this mansion. I just don't know what the circumstances are. Well, 
so. Oh dear. Oh dear. So Lagaya has Deborah do most of the bird collecting for her to process and sell them as meat, and she doesn't seem to realize that Deborah is most likely dead right now. Welp. Oh, yeah. Four food for 39 gold. I think I'll rely on foraging from enemies instead. Oh, this building is also rather destroyed. Well, Deborah, you shall be avenged! So we've explored the giant's forge. Humans will be eaten, stay away. But there is more giant territory around here. Including a rather large wall. And I probably wouldn't have known about that had I not seen it in someone else's playthrough. You emerge from the concealed gap in the giant's massive wall, only to find a large and well-armed band of hill giants. They stand firm, not moving to attack, but ready to try to slaughter you if you approach. Lots of fighters, a few shamans, no chief. This shouldn't be too bad. For 12 spell points a pop, Wall of Blades might be a little bit excessive, but man, is it effective. Ew, perhaps I did in fact need to slip through that gap in the wall. I suppose it makes sense for the giants not to put the gates to their main lair just right out in the open. You see a small hill giant village about a half mile away. You edge closer, careful to keep concealed, and see it's just one clan, with servants. A fast, careful assault could probably destroy it. Sure, why not? You sneak out of the hills hoping to catch the small village by surprise. Their ogre guards, however, see you as you approach. The whole giant clan turns out in order to help repulse you. The giants and their ogre servants dead, you search the huts. There's a bit of gold and a bit of food, and a bunch of knickknacks that the giants seem to value. Not much else to interest you. Okay then. Land of giants, we will kill people who go in and are not us. Yeah, you're doing a pretty crap job of that so far, guys. Isn't that right, Garnet? Hello? What's in this little valley, then? You see a large stone circle at the end of the path. The stones are huge and misshapen and a huge, ugly, warty creature wanders among them. It's a huge, pale, evil-looking humanoid. Well, it's not one of the stone circles that teaches me magic, but... It is a gorgon lair, apparently. Those giant lizards might, might as well not have been there at all for all the impact they had on that battle.
you smell something peculiar. Your sharp woodsman senses lead to some small, twisted plants growing at the base of a rock. You don't recognize it at first, but then you realize that it's mandrake. Some of the roots are even the right age for use in alchemy. You pick the mandrake. Unfortunately, this was a very small patch. It's not likely that any new mandrake will develop here for months. Hmm. Yeah, I do not know what kind of in-game timer alchemic alchemical ingredients like that follow for regenerating. Another small hill giant village. I'm going to want to rest after this one. I've been getting a little bit cocky and letting people take a lot of damage. Okay. Jeff, why did you think it was a good idea to give ogre mages level 6 mage spells when giant shamans only get level 3? That is some BS. Anyway, the giant's huts only contain some gold, some food, and some junk. You take what's valuable and leave the rest. At first, it seems like lean pickings. Then, in the Ogre Magi's hut, you find a slender crystal wand. Figures the Ogre Mage gets the useful thing. This valley is rich in rocks for giants to throw at people. I just realized I left my horses out over by Lorelei. That's one of the better places to leave them, really. Ooh, monsters fled. Wonderful. Slightly less wonderful, that. 
much easier than any fight involving an ogre mage. But yeah, I kind of want to check mountain ranges for secret passages. This one does seem to be extending quite far to the north, though. Yet another small giant village, this one tucked into the hills. No magic users here. Easy fight. That one took a couple of minutes only because I didn't even bother hasting anyone. The giants and their ogre servants dead. You search the huts. Bit of gold, bit of food, nothing else. Once again, disappointed in finding the secrets. At the head of the path, you find a large patch of flowers. They're very beautiful. The yellow petals seem to glow with their own light. Their scent is so thick, the air seems dense. You realize these aren't ordinary flowers. They are ember flowers. Ember flowers are a very valuable alchemical ingredient. Finding all kinds of valuable alchemy stuff today. Wait, what recipes do I know? Okay, I could potentially make medium speed, gray mold salve, weak energy, potion of clarity. And eventually, I still need to learn medium energy and knowledge brew. And some of the others, I guess. But speed and especially energy potions are the main ones that could be useful to me. And maybe Potion of Clarity, just in case everyone gets super dumbfounded. Unfortunately, this does not actually tell me which ingredients I need to make the potions. But the Alchemy Library does tell me. Eh, speed is probably not worth my while. Weak speed, I mean. Medium speed, need glowing nettle and worm grass. I think I have some of that stashed in the Hawk's Mance and or Fort Emergence. Grey Mold Cell needs Grey Mold and will cure any kind of disease. I will probably not be making that this game. I need warm grass and glowing nettle. Grey mold and holly, okay. You find a human settlement out here in the middle of nowhere. The people are healthy looking and well defended, and their crops seem to be thriving. They wait for you to approach. Do you? Sure. When you get close to the village, you notice that several of the humans have snuck around behind you. You look closer, and see that the walls of the village are decorated with human bones. These people seem disinclined to let you go. Oh dear. We seem to have found an isolated village of cannibal hillfolk. That won't do. That was surprisingly easy for a relatively late game area. You search the village. You find a variety of trinkets and coins, as well as a lot of food you're very skeptical about eating. You find a bizarre shrine filled with bones and symbols you've never seen before. Very creepy. You leave. And I should probably cure that poison on Peridot. This mountain range just does keep on going north, doesn't it? Ugh, finally found the edge of it. Uh, 
And this looks like there might be something potentially interesting in here. There is not. Boo. Okay, so we are still in giant territory, to judge by the wandering monsters. Ha! Huh. And this road takes us to Spine Ridge. Spine Ridge Mines. Claim jumping punishable by slow death. You find the entrance to a small, abandoned mine. The ground has been scorched and scarred by a variety of dangerous spells. The miners must have left after being attacked by some powerful, magic-using creatures. There's nothing stopping you from going in and having a look around. Do you? You don't get far into the mine before you find that it's been sealed off. Explosions have sealed off the passage with hundreds of tons of rock. Aw. Same thing there. You move down into the mine, only to find the main entrance was sealed off only a hundred feet in. You move back out, only to find you've walked into a golem ambush. The animated, lethal statues are waiting for you at the entrance. Ew. Fire golems and ice golems. Something new today. You see a golem, an enchanted, humanoid-shaped creature of stone and metal. However, this golem is smaller, faster, and more lethal-looking than any golem you've seen. Its face is completely featureless. It makes a troglo look friendly by comparison. Fire Golem! Looks like it is a decent fighter type that also breathes fire, is magic resistant and immune to fire and poison. Could be annoying. Ice Golem is the same, but ice oriented. Oh crap, that is a lot of damage. I don't think I like these golems. Also, they half of them won't be affected much by flame strike or firestorm. Very annoying indeed. Not immune to web, though. Ow! Maybe that ice shield would have been a good investment after all. I forgot just how lethal these things are. Ugh. Hmm. Death arrows may actually... Well, they'd be okay. The golems are still magic resistant, which is very annoying. Got three of them! It's 
wipe you some more just for fun. they drop a bunch of golem gems and some food for some reason. You pried this gem from the remains of a golem you slew. It looks like you'll be able to get some cash for it. Ooh, kind of a lot of cash, in fact. Hee <laughs> hee. Yeah, their only use is to sell for monies. Yeah, if there's golems in the area, maybe I don't want to be wandering around too much. Okay, found the edge of the continent again. You stumble upon a merchant caravan under attack by brigands. When you look closer, however, you have a hard time believing your eyes. The brigands are Empire soldiers! If nothing is done, the vastly outmatched caravan guards don't stand a chance. Do you help out against the renegade soldiers? Heck yeah, we're exiles. We love killing Empire soldiers. Everyone involved in this growing battle is surprised by your approach. The soldiers are surprised that anyone would defy them. And the merchants are surprised to find out that they might not be about to die. My lord, did you just summon basilisks? Ugh.
Yikes, a Rony! The caravan guards were mostly useless there, but they did manage to survive. The merchants bandage up their wounded, thank you profusely, and move quickly south. Good idea. They don't offer a reward, unfortunately, but from the looks of things, they didn't have a gold piece to spare. I don't know if I trust you guys. You meet a quick-moving, fairly fresh Empire Patrol. When they get close to you, they look you over. They seem to recognize you, and have a quick discussion. The result is unfortunate. They attack immediately. Okay, Captains, Empire Archers, Evil Priests, a bit easier to deal with than the group that involved an evil wizard, who summoned basilisks and a demon on me. But as my stats are looking a bit crap right now, I'm going to retreat. And perhaps investigate the town of Myrnia. And perhaps break up the episode here. I've been recording for a while, but a lot of that's been fights that I'm probably going to edit out, so uh, yeah, we'll just have to see what the final product looks like. So have a good one.